On the eighth day of October, Halloween gave to me eight snowy mazes, seven bacons digging, six doorways bending, five children yowling, four zombie bulls, three haunted mirrors, two monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to our continuing coverage here on LegionPodcast.com of the 31 Days of Halloween. Continuing coverage makes it sound like we've got a remote down at the the scene of an accident. No, uh, (laughs) instead, what we are doing, of course, is is counting down to the the 31st of October, uh, which you may have heard is Halloween. And uh, the best way I know to count down to uh, that the most glorious of holidays is to uh, to watch some of the most glorious of horror movies as well as some new stuff and some stuff I haven't seen and stuff I've been meaning to see and uh, it, it's a whole list of stuff as you know we've done seven films so far this is the eighth and in our journey through you know haunted people places and things this is maybe the most famous haunted house movie Maybe The Haunting of Hill House is is in that conversation. I'd like to think so. I love that movie a whole, whole lot. Uh, or the 1963 The Haunting. Uh, and The Haunting of Hill House, the Netflix series. Also quite good. We are not doing that this year. Uh, perhaps next year <laughs> we will do Mike Flanagan's the, the Haunting of Hill House. But not this 31 days. So, uh, alright, so here's the thing. When I'm putting together this list... I'm thinking, hey, I want to make sure that I get some heavy hitters in there. Uh, Not only do I want some heavy hitters, I want some stuff that I actually enjoy sitting down to watch, not just, you know, hey, this movie is famous and therefore let's talk about it. Uh, So when I picked The Shining, I was like, do I really want to sit down and watch The Shining again? The Shining is, you know, two, two and a half hours long. And, you know, it. I hadn't seen it in a little while, plus... I I just got the 4K not so long ago, and I hadn't even taken the wrapper off. So, all of those factors. Uh, Plus, I thought, you know, it'd be fun to go back and revisit The Shining and talk about it for the the show. Um, It is not a movie that I watch all the time, kind of because of its length. And because of the kind of movie it is, it's a movie that I find very difficult to just kind of throw on in the background. Like, I am very partial to throwing on old Hammer movies. That is sort of my comfort food, or or sort of, it's the entertainment that I don't feel necessarily compelled that I need to watch every single second of it, uh, because I've seen it. I know it. I know its moves. And it's it's fun. You know, I look up and I see Christopher Lee burying his fangs and Peter Cushing coming at him with a stake, which happens, by the way, surprisingly little (laughs) in the run of of the Hammer horror films. Uh, the the Dracula films, to be sure, but uh, but they're really comforting. I really like them. They're fun. They're occasionally very funny, um, intentionally sometimes even. So I have a lot of affection for those movies. But but folks, something like The Shining, I can't throw on in the background because even though I've seen it a bunch, and I know its moves. It is a movie that demands attention. You know, the the score alone of The Shining will make you unable to do anything else. You just can't function. Like, that. that is a score that is so discordant and shrieking at times, it'll scare your pets out of the room. Um, and I wouldn't change a thing, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't... I w- Wendy, I wouldn't hurt a hair on the movie's goddamn little head. <laughs> But you can't ignore it, is the thing. So, uh, so yeah, so I sat down, I, I put in the 4K Blu-ray for the first time. Which, by the way, looks gorgeous. Like, the movie always looks beautiful. And I always... Jack Alcott, is that the name of the cinematographer? I always blank on that, but... What a tremendous job. I mean, Kubrick, of course, uh, has a large hand in this. And I think maybe... For the first time ever in watching uh, The Shining, it was really hypnotic. I really couldn't look away from it. And I've always really loved The Shining. 
I don't know that I ever loved The Shining as much as I did when I finished it, you know, just last night, as a matter of fact. It was just shocking to me how great that movie is. It's And, and the thing is, the movie has problems. You know, Scatman Crothers doesn't have a lot of agency in that movie. Uh, spoilers for The Shining, by the way, this 40-year-old classic. I, I will talk liberally about the shit that happens in it, um, as I do with all these movies, pretty much. Uh, there, there's some new ones coming up. I'll probably be a little more spoiler conscious, but my rule is if the movie is 20 years old, then fuck you. You had, you had your chance, uh, <laughs> you know, unless you're like 12, in which case, eh, you know, you, maybe you're just now renting movies for yourself. So, eh, you know, you fucked up. You got born too late. Uh, also you shouldn't be listening to this. I use a lot of foul language and there's uh, strong sexual content and also violence. But, <laughs> back to The Shining, yeah, right, it doesn't totally hold together. Like, Scatman Crothers, um, you know, he gets the the call from Danny to come save him, and he shows up and gets killed, and the only reason that you really need him to do that is so that there's a snow cat that Wendy and Danny can get away in. That is his whole role in the movie, other than to tell the audience what The Shining is. Uh, <laughs> um... Aside from that, that's his only job in the movie is to bring them a snowcat so they can escape and and still allow, you know, Jack Torrance uh, to tease them about the fact that he ripped up the uh, the snowcat that they have. You're going to be in for a big surprise. Uh, Jack, oh, let's just get out of the way. Jack Nicholson is fucking amazing in this movie. The big complaint that Stephen King had with uh, Jack Nicholson and The Shining, which, by the way, is not wrong, was that his story is the story of a damaged but nice guy trying to put his family back together in this hotel, and then due to the influence of the hotel, uh, he becomes a monster. Jack Nicholson shows up at the hotel a fucking monster from frame one. Now, he's not chasing anybody with an axe right away, but he's quick-tempered to be sure. Like, in the car ride, Danny is like, hey, uh, I'm hungry. And <laughs> what is Jack Nicholson's or, you know, Jack Torrance's response? Well, I guess you shouldn't eat in your breakfast, you son of a bitch. That is Jack Nicholson throughout the film. It is He is one hair away from fucking his wife and kid up. Before he ever steps foot in the hotel. And and the hotel just uh, it takes him for a ride uh, as well. But I like his performance is so good. It's so malevolent. Um, <laughs> one of the things... I think I've said this on maybe a Duncan and Bo Come Correct or something like that. But one of the things in this movie that never fails to kind of horrify and delight me simultaneously is when Wendy is backing away from when you're having the confrontation on the stairs where Jack Nicholson has finally flipped his lid and is totally going to kill uh, Shelley Duvall uh, in, in, as Wendy, his wife. And uh, she's swinging the bat and he's like, where are you going? And she says, I just want to go to my room. And he's like, yeah, why you want to go there, Wendy? And she says, I just need to think about things for a minute. And his response to this is, you've been thinking about things your whole goddamn life. What good is a few more minutes going to do you now? It is a, like, it is his admission of I'm about to murder you. Your life's about to be over. And from that point on, it, 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 like he is just a maniac, not just a crazy person. He's a legit maniac. And there is a difference. Uh, ask e Ethan uh, Hawk. No, not Ethan Hawk. What's the other one? The other Ethan. Uh, the the Hobbit. <laughs> Elijah Wood. That's who I'm thinking of. Jesus Christ, boo. Anyway, he is just perfectly menacing every second, and he seems to be having a ball. That's the thing, and, and that's maybe why the hotel is like, oh no no, you're you're one of our guys. You were angry before you ever got here. You know, he's like. The Hulk in those Marvel movies. His secret is he's always about to kill his family. Uh, <laughs> before before they arrive in the car, he's like, 
I could just drive this car over the goddamn ridge. Maybe I'd survive. Uh, but yeah, it's a, he like he's fantastic. The conversation he has with uh, Lloyd in the bar about you know a, a f- one millisecond more pressure per square inch per square inch, you know, like all that stuff. Um, he, like he's so good, and, and Kubrick is you know brilliant at ramping all this up. Like I said, the score is just uh, without the score, the movies you know, 40% less unnerving and scary. The score is fantastic. Whether it's the low tones of the beginning when you're flying over the the mountain in the lake, like, boom, boom, you know, that, all that, uh, the screeching scores, the heartbeat sounds through all the room 237 stuff. Like, just the sound design is, is phenomenal. Um, like I said, beautifully shot, beautifully acted. A lot of people give Shelley Duvall shit, and they are wrong. Shelley Duvall plays this harried wife trying to hold her shit together. The only person she has to talk to in this whole goddamn hotel is her kid, who is a child. And if you've ever talked to them for any length of time, you know that's kind of a bummer (laughs) for any extended period of time. And then you've got Jack, her husband, who is giving her shit left and right for daring to speak to him. So, anyway, I think she portrays all that well. I know that she was driven to the brink of insanity by Kubrick on the set of that movie. Um, but, it, you know, does it, was it worth it? Maybe. Uh, I, you, <laughs> I, I hate to think about Shelley Duvall being tortured on the set of The Shining to achieve this performance that, you know, historically she took a lot of shit for. But I think it's great. I, I think she's fantastic in it. It's got a good kid actor, you know, he's he's convincing enough in the in the part. And also I think this time around the supernatural elements of of the hotel and its influence on Jack was maybe more forefront in my mind and played a little better. Um I do think there are threads that that don't completely come full circle. I think some of the stuff with time is deliberately weird. You know, there's this whole thing about, well, Jack hasn't had a drink for five months, but at a certain point he tells uh, Lloyd it's been three years since uh, he he dislocated Danny's arm, which theoretically was when he stopped drinking. And and also Danny's so young. I don't know. Like, uh, also there's some stuff with Grady's name uh, is different at the beginning of the movie that he's called Charles Grady. Uh, in the interview, but then Delbert Grady later. Um, all that stuff is like, well, it's the same but different, and maybe that's just the reality of the hotel as it pulls uh, Jack into it. And, you know, the conversations about, like, you've always been the caretaker here, sir. Uh, that kind of thing that maybe in, you know, in the world of the hotel that he, his name is, you know, Eddie Torrance or something. Uh, when he is later haunting some other poor schmuck uh, at, at a winter later at the Overlook. It's just a visceral, uh, like, staggeringly watchable movie. As long as it is, it doesn't feel very long. And by the time Jack Torrance is running around uh, a, a snowy hedge maze, muttering gibberish, <laughs> by the time that is happening in the movie... I, you, you're in like you were, you are a hundred percent sunk into the world of this film. Um, it is, you know, they don't fuck around. Like once you know what the ending of this movie is like, Oh, Jack froze. And here's the picture. Wendy and Danny are driving away in the snow cat done and done. We are done with this movie. It starts on the way to the, or it starts at the interview where Jack gets the job. It ends when they leave the hotel. Boom. Story's over. Love it. Uh, as as long and sprawling as the movie is, it still feels incredibly compact and claustrophobic. Uh, I could go on. Like, I can talk about The Shining for another 30 minutes, about the, the nuances and details. Like, we haven't gotten into the great uh, prosthetic work of the woman in Room 237. And, you know, it. why Jack... Like, at that point, is he just... He's clearly horrified by, way, by what he's seen in the room. But at that point, is the hotel's influence such that it erases it from his mind? Or he just gets cool with it. Like, the hotel convinces him, 
like it kind of does in the book, like, oh, your responsibility is the hotel. You can't fuck this up. So, I don't know. I don't know. Those are the things that you can debate uh, when you talk about this movie, and it's fun to. Uh, this movie is <laughs> fucking amazing. So, at any rate, folks, uh, I think we're going to wrap up our discussion of The Shining right there. Um, it's amazing. Like, I, it, as I've said with many of these movies, if you've never seen it, you, of course, should. And if you haven't seen it in a while, uh, completely worth your time to go back and watch it, uh, you know, when you get the opportunity. It's a, it's a tremendous film. And and scared the hell out of me. Like, it really unnerved me. The, there are moments, and not even moments of, like, real fright or, or anything. It's just this overwhelming sense of dread and melancholy and, and being trapped. Uh, it's, it's really something. That movie is really something. So, anyway... Uh, you've heard it here first. Hot Take Ransdell, first on the scene. The Shining's a real fucking good movie. Um, but it, it was a great inclusion in the 31 Days of Halloween. Next year when we do this, I'm not going to do The Shining, probably. Uh, I'm going to try to pick mostly different movies, although there may be some crossover. So, I I, I bid it a very fond adieu, and, a, and a, almost a reluctant adieu. But, uh, as they say, until we meet again, The Shining. What good's a few more movies? viewing's gonna do for you uh it's a great movie anyway um folks that is day eight of uh our 31 days of halloween i hope you're enjoying this uh i've gotten some a uh, little bit of feedback here and there from folks no emails yet so uh folks by all means drop me a, a line at bo bo at legion podcasts.com with the subject line halloween and uh, let me know what you're watching, what your traditions are, what you're uh, what you're up to this holiday season, and uh, and, and we'll chat about it. Um, I will say that somebody did post in the Facebook group. Uh, we're saying if you want to jump into the Legion Podcast uh, uh, Facebook group, then uh, by all means you can just search for Legion Podcasts and uh, and and join the group there. Uh, when you do so, um, you can just tag me. And uh, let me know what you're thinking about for Halloween as well, if that works for you. So, um, but somebody had had dropped the uninvited into uh, the uh, the Facebook group page, and that is uh, I, sh- I should have looked beforehand. I don't remember the year, but the uninvited was certainly of that time where you had some really great horror films uh, like The Haunting and so forth. Uh, the cat people like, like it, it came out of that period and the, the uninvited is a movie I'm not covering, uh, the, this year, although, you know, I, it did cross my mind. It was almost on the list, uh, and it may very well, uh, be so at a future date, but, uh, the uninvited is a beautiful, uh, kind of ghost story. Um, it, uh, again, it's black and white. It's kind of, uh, of that era where you had big Hollywood stars doing uh, spooky movies, and it's got this great gothic house on a hill uh, overlooking the ocean, and there's this story about a ghost that might be sort of semi-possessing a young girl that the um, probably too old lead is is uh, falling in love with. And anyway, but it's a terrific movie. Like the characters get excited when they think that the house might be haunted. The brother and sister, I think it is, uh, who own the house. And they're, they're excited about the adventure of it. And it's one of the earliest examples that I can think of along with the haunting, to be fair, uh, like Dr. Markaway of being enthusiastic as opposed to terrified at at the thought of a, a, a haunted house. You know, there's not a Lou Costello going (laughs) when he sees a ghost. So uh, you're welcome for the Lou Costello impression. So I'm not doing the uninvited, but the uninvited is a if you want to continue your journey through like just amazing haunted house stories. The uninvited is certainly on that list. Um, So well done. Uh, Good job picking that movie. He said he was inspired by listening to this and uh, it is it is one of the great. Uh, haunted house films no doubt about it um you could pair that with like a poltergeist is kind of an interesting pairing if you were going to do a wine and cheese uh of horror with that uh or as the crypt keeper might say 
uh, whine and shriek. Thanks, as always, for listening. Thanks for listening to Legion Podcasts uh, shows in general. Uh, we appreciate the support. We have a Patreon. You can find that at patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. Uh, but again, I don't want to do a whole lot of uh, promotion here uh, other than to encourage you to listen to the other stuff on the network. This is just about Halloween and having a good time. So thanks for listening. Thanks for joining me. It's a lot of fun to do these. It gives me a great reason to go back and watch these movies and to think a little more analytically about them, uh, which is, it turns out has been paying dividends left and right. So uh, guys have a great Thursday. It is uh, enjoy yourselves. And, and most of all have a spooky Thursday and uh, I'll see you right here tomorrow for a special Friday edition of uh, the 31 days of Halloween. Uh, so I will see you then. Bye everybody. Bye.